Hey guys, Larry the Tractor Guy. Hey, check it out. So we're out here on a guy's farm today and he's got a 7230R and he's complaining about the engine running rough and smoking and, and uh, sounds like it's got an injector miss. And so we're gonna go ahead and verify his problem. And uh, we probably, we're probably gonna go ahead and run an injector flush. And I'm gonna talk about injector flush just a little bit and some of the important key things about doing an injector flush on one of these later model uh, high pressure common rail engines. And uh, man, I've seen that fix a lot of injector problems in the past. And so that's kind of one of my go-tos uh, quite often is to go ahead and run an injector flush uh, before we decide to put an expensive set of injectors in an engine. We've got the tractor running now here in the barn. It pretty well sounds normal. But one of the things is he's pulling this big uh, mixer with this tractor and going out and feeding cattle. So uh, one of the things he's talked about is that he really notices a, a difference in power uh, when he's loaded up with this mixer and going down the road. One of the other complaints is a little bit of a turbo noise. And so we're listening to this engine running right now and we can hear the turbo noise is pretty prevalent. And especially when we throttle the high throttle and then back to idle. Okay, so sometimes I've seen this problem with a turbo that's getting ready to fail. And then also I've seen this trouble if we have an exhaust leak. Okay, so we're gonna look over this exhaust system really good and make sure that we don't have a leak and then we'll go uh, load test it down the road and verify our injector or our engine miss and see if we need to go ahead and run an injector flush. We went ahead and killed the engine here so I could show you what I'm looking at here. I believe his turbo noise uh, his complaint about his turbo noise is probably, I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna try to shine my light right up here on the exhaust. So that uh, number four exhaust port right there, we've got a pretty good, pretty good exhaust leak right in that area. And that's probably what's causing the turbo to spool up and make that whistling noise is having an exhaust leak on the exhaust manifold. So more than likely, that's gonna be the fix for his problem on his turbo noise. I don't think that we have a failed turbo. I think we've got more of an exhaust pressure problem. And so we're gonna probably end up going ahead and putting exhaust manifold gaskets on this at some point. But we're gonna go ahead and run the engine a little bit and verify his injector complaint and uh, see, what we, see what we come up with that. We figured out after running this 7230R here down the road that we, are generating an ECU injector code of a 655.18 and a 656.18. And so when we look that up in Service Advisor here, it talks about the injector number five and or number six not responding. Okay, so the ECU has detected that the injector fuel flow at number five and or number six, because we've got a code for number six to is lower than expected. And so if we look down through here, it talks about checking uh, engine software and fuel lines, um, electrical connection, connector. So we're gonna look at the electrical connector um, here on the side of the cylinder head and make sure that we're making a good connection there um, from our engine wiring harness over to our injector harness. Um, but what I wanted to pay particular attention to is there's 10 steps here to kind of sort of verify our code. But when we get down to step number seven, and that's the one I want to focus on there, is cleaning the injectors. Okay, and so to clean the injectors, um, about the third step down here, it says operate engine in a condition uh, when the code would become active. And so we do, and... So what it's gonna have us do is go ahead and clean the injectors, okay? So that's what we're gonna do is run an injector flush on these injectors because I have seen an injector flush fix the 655 
and 656 any of those codes dealing with injector flow I've seen a lot of times that that uh, could potentially fix our problem with an injector and so we're going to talk about that just a little bit but first we're going to check this connector uh, from our main engine harness here over to our injector harness here um, and what we're looking for there particularly what we're looking for here's our connector from our engine harness so what you're looking for on that mostly is to see if you have engine oil uh, inside of this connector here um, I have seen a few times that the injector harness can be bad and not sealed from the inside good and cause engine oil to contaminate the connection here and cause some codes. Well, it looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and clean it out with some electrical cleaner. It doesn't look like it's leaking oil in the connector. Uh, we're going to go ahead and clean it out with electrical cleaner, plug that back in, and we're going to go ahead and do an injector flush. We're getting ready to flush injectors here and... We're taking our uh, fuel inlet line coming from the tank over to the filter housing loose here, okay? Because that's where we're going to tie our flush gun in at. And then we're going to take our return line right here loose, okay? And that's where the fuel returns back to the tank. And so essentially what we're doing is we're going to install our flush gun. Um, it's basically a, another reservoir here that we're going to tie into the fuel system and use this as our as our fuel system and put our flush in and pour our flush into this container and flush the system now remember this is a very important step to go ahead and operate the tractor in which we did and get the coolant temperature the engine temperature up to normal operating temperature now i have found a few times that if it's really really um cold out that it's kind of a struggle to do that and so you may have to either block a portion of the radiator to get your operating temperature up and then on these tractors on the 7R sometimes I'll go ahead and pull this cover off of the shroud on this side so that we're so that we're not pulling so much air through that cooling package we're pulling in air through this hole instead and so it will get that engine temperature up to operating temperature pretty quick and and stay at that temperature during flushing. The John Deere flush for flushing these fuel systems, I found that it works really, really, really good. Um, that is a TY27830 injector flush here. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like here in a little bit when we pour it into our flush gun. But it is a super, super good flush and Man, I'll tell you, we do a lot of these fuel flushes on these high pressure common rail fuel systems because the tolerances on those injectors are so close and any little bit of a injector that's sticking just a little bit will cause some of these and generate some of these codes. And it's not always a have to replace the injector deal. Um, we, we have seen this flush work miracles a lot of times when we're hitting these... Uh, these injector codes talking about fuel flow. And so I have actually um, flushed injectors twice and do them, do them two times rather than just once um, and clean them up really good and run a long time before we see any injector codes. Um, so it's kind of one of my go-tos if we're hitting some of these codes randomly and not all the time, we're, we're gonna go ahead and go on with this injector flush um, this injector flush has some really good additives in it, too, that uh, basically restores the injectors back to new, okay? And so when we get all of this hooked up, we're going to run this engine at 1,100 RPMs, okay? And we're going to do three full strokes of from idle to high idle uh, during this flush process. So we're at five minutes. We're going to do a full throttle. And then at 10 minutes, we're going to do a full throttle. And then at 15 minutes, we're going to do a full throttle cycle. Okay, and that's part of the steps of flushing the injectors. Also, one other thing that I want to make mention. And uh, I guess if you're, if you're doing this, that's fine. If you're not, that's fine. Um, I think either way works well. But um, 
The steps basically for flushing the injectors calls for going ahead and changing the primary and the secondary fuel filters. And that's fine if you want to do that. But what I have found is that if we do that prior to installing our flush gun and we go ahead and change those filters, then we run a lot of stuff through the fuel system back into the filters and then cause the filters to become plugged prematurely. And so I just my my preference is to go ahead and flush the fuel system uh, twice a lot of times. And then after I flush the fuel system, then go ahead and change uh, my primary and secondary fuel filter um, because it just it, it I hate for to have that flush in the bottom of that settlement bowl um, after we install the new filter. So if you do that, go ahead and drain that remaining flush out of that out of that primary filter and get that out of there. Okay, so we're going to carry on here and show you what this looks like after we get our flush gun connected here. First thing we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to we're going to unscrew the top of our canister here, pull our filter element out, okay? And we're going to put a new filter element in there. Try to be as clean as you can, guys, when you're when you're working with this flush gun. It's pretty important. And then there is our new filters, an SW10967P1 is our filter element, okay? And that's basically going to filter the fuel the flush that we're putting through the uh, fuel system there. So we're gonna go ahead and install that on our flush gun. Okay, we've got our filter on. So now we're gonna screw the base canister back on. We need to get our flush poured in. We need to shake that up really good. Shake that up really, really good. Okay. And let's go ahead and pour our flush in. Okay. And I'll show you what this looks like. It basically looks like it's kind of a solution stuff that uh, sort of looks like i don't know there's several different types but it sort of looks like uh, fuel that doesn't have any dye in it okay but it does have some good additives in there that cleans the fuel system uh breaks a lot of that uh carbon buildup and and uh what am i trying to say silt buildup in the fuel rail and in the injectors i want to make sure that our air bleed valve there is open so that we don't get any pressure on that uh, on that fuel canister there okay so let's go ahead and take our hoses and our flush gun over to the tractor then we're going to take and hook the red hose okay we're going to tie it into the bottom of our fuel canister here and we're going to take the other end of the red hose and go into our inlet side of our filter then we're going to take our black hose and go into the top portion of our flush can here and then we're other end of our black hose will go to our return side now we're going to turn the key on and prime the system and basically let uh, the flush pull in through the filters and feel the pull off push all of the air out of the fuel system and out of our hoses okay so key on I don't know if you can see it there, but we're getting a little bit of a, a little bit of a red dye, getting some fuel pushed back into our flush gun there. Okay, so that's a pretty good indication that we've primed the system. Key off. Okay, so we're gonna turn the key off, let everything power down. Then we're gonna start the engine, and we're gonna run the engine at 1,100 RPMs. Okay, and then five minutes, we're gonna do a full stroke from idle to high idle and then back to idle at five minutes. We're gonna do that three times. So we're gonna do it at five minutes, 10 minutes, and 15 minutes. Okay, so go ahead and start the engine. Okay guys, we're at our first five minute interval. So we're gonna go ahead and throttle up and then back to idle and then back to 1100 RPM. Okay. So now in another five minutes, we'll do that again. And you can see our flush down here. Okay, so we're about halfway through. So we got our flush completed, uh, disconnected our flush gun, installed our new filters, 
and we're going to go ahead and prime the new filters and go ahead and run the tractor and see how how it runs after we did an injector flush uh, it took us about i don't know right around 40 minutes probably to complete the flush um, and you can do that a second time or third time however many times you think uh, we just did it once today we're going to go ahead and run the machine see how it runs and we'll go from there hey guys check out larry the tractor guy videos here other videos here subscribe here and buy all your john deere parts here we'll make it work i think gonna have to make it we'll make it work come on let's go <laughs> we need you need some bloopers. food y'all already y'all already burning me out some bloopers he's sitting in the sun over here man